no death. He's got many faces. I look forward to seeing this one. Everything you did brought you where you are now. Where you belong. Doesn't tire. Doesn't stop. Doesn't feel. I promise to fight for the living. I intend to keep that promise. Hey everyone, it's Fentoni, HBO's finally dropped the Game of Thrones Season 8 trailer. We've been waiting for this for so long now, but it's finally happened with just over a month to go before the final season. As always, we're going to go and watch the trailer, break it all down and give you guys my reaction. I will talk about it scene by scene and give my thoughts and theories. It looks like it's mostly, if not all, from episode 1 to 3. It's mostly focused around the Winterfell battle against the Night King, Jon's parentage and Cersei scheming in the south. So the trailer starts off with Arya battered and beaten. She's got a bloody eye and she's panicking, breathing very heavy. It looks like she's running away from something or someone, probably a White Walker. So far only Jon, Samwell and Mira Reed have managed to kill a White Walker. It looks like Arya will get a kill, but it looks like it's going to be a difficult fight. She's going to come out of it beaten. Obviously Needle's pretty useless against White Walkers, it's made of just normal steel, it would just shatter against their weapons and even touching them, but she has a dragonglass dagger, and of course her Valyrian steel dagger, which still seems to be on her hip. Davos and the walls of Winterfell with archers. I'm really getting Helm's Deep vibes here, you know, waiting for the enemy to arrive. The women and children, Varys, Gilly and Little Sam are in the crypts down below. Yeah, definitely getting Helm's Deep vibes. The women and children in the caves at Helm's Deep, and the women and children in the crypts of Winterfell. I do think there's secret tunnels in the crypts, and whoever manages to survive this battle is going to use them to flee south. But there's going to be a lot of deaths in this battle, it's going to be hard to watch. So back to Arya Stark, she says, I know Death, he's got many faces, I look forward to seeing this one. So this is definitely before the battle, you know, she's very confident. Obviously she's referring to her time with the faceless men who worship the many-faced god, or the god of death. And the Night King has been referred to as Death, she's probably been told that, you know, the Night King is Death, he's coming, and this is probably her reaction. But whatever happens, this is Arya's first time in a battle. It's been reported that Maisie Williams trained hard and filmed even harder for these scenes. We were going to have many big Arya scenes at Winterfell. She seemed to be very confident at the start, you know, the more recent kind of Arya, where she's very confident about herself and her abilities. But once the fighting starts, it's going to be a different story. There's lots of theories the Night King is connected to the Many-Faced God, you know, the Red God, the Lord of Light, they're all connected. Next up is a Greyjoy fleet, but there's no sign of Euron Greyjoy's flagship, Silence. It's either a smaller fleet or not a full shot, but I think it's likely it's going to be Fionn's fleet. You know, it's much smaller. Euron's modified sigil is not present, so it's probably Fionn's fleet, and this is him trying to save Yara. Obviously trailers are cut in special ways and you know they don't match up to the final product. After this shot of these ships you go to Silence and the Golden Company and their leader Harry Strickland. Remember Euron Greyjoy is bringing the Golden Company back to King's Landing for Cersei. She obviously doesn't trust him but they're obviously going to try and play each other. Euron wants to become king but Cersei's not a complete fool. She knows that he'll eventually try and betray her. But she needs the Golden Company. She needs to get them into King's Landing. So we finally see Beric Dondarrion, Lord Commander Ed and Tormund. So this confirms that Beric and Tormund are alive and they escaped Eastwatch. They probably headed west to Castle Black, met up with the Night's Watch and have headed south to Winterfell. This is not Castle Black, this is Winterfell. 
Bran says, everything you did brought you where you are now, where you belong, home. It seems like Bran's talking to Sam in this scene, and then Sam turns around, maybe John has entered the room, but the dialogue from Bran doesn't actually match up with this scene. You know, Bran's lips are not moving, so it's probably just cut for the trailer, but I think this could be the scene where Bran and Sam tell John the truth. We all know that John's true name is Aegon Targaryen. The line where you belong plays over the Red Keep could refer to the fact that John is the rightful heir to the Iron Throne, but the line home plays over Wintertown and Winterfell in the distance. John's at the crossroads of his destiny now. He can either embrace who he's born as or stay true to how he was raised. But whatever happens and whatever the parentage reveal does to him, he'll always be Jon Snow, he'll always be Ned Stark's son. He can be a Targaryen and he can be a Stark. Cersei looks very happy in this shot. The Golden Company have probably arrived in Blackwater Bay. This trailer features a lot of scenes from Episode 1 and 3. Maybe everything's from Episode 1 and 3. We know the White Walker battle at Winterfell is going to happen in Episode 3. And after that battle, we know pretty much nothing. I like how they've done it. You know, keep everything focused on the stuff we know. Keep everything else a secret. In this shot, a child watches the Unsullied march throughout Wintertown and head to Winterfell. This parallels the first episode when Bran climbed the towers. It's likely going to be the opening scene, unless there's a cold opening, but we know the first scene after the titles will happen in Wintertown, and it's likely going to be Danny's army arriving. As Bran says the line home, the Unsullied army of Jon Snow and Danny in the middle riding side by side. The ultimate power couple, they look so good together, but drama is coming. Sansa sees Drogon and Rhaegal fly overhead for the first time. She looks kind of amazed but also shocked, maybe a bit of terror in there as well. You know, Sansa's seen a lot for her time, but this is dragons. The dragons fly past Winterfell and we get some incredible shots. I'm loving this trailer for the fact it's showing off Rhaegal a lot. His screen time is probably quadrupled in this trailer. Because, you know, he's always been shoved to the background, especially in Season 7. You know, when Drogon enters the dragon pit, he flies down and Danny gets off him, and Rhaegal's just flying in the background. Obviously, that's kind of budget reasons, you know, you don't have to pay as much to get a dragon in the background than you do full up in the front of the screen. But it seems like Rhaegal's going to get a lot of screen time, and I think he's going to be incredibly important. I think Jon Snow will eventually ride him. I've been saying that for a long time now. Speaking of John, John and Danny are in the crypts of Winterfell. It's kind of like Ned and Robert in the first episode when they go down the crypts. I don't know if this is when John's parentage is revealed or not. He could be looking at Lyanna's statue, maybe Ned's, we don't know. John says they're coming. Our enemy doesn't tire, doesn't stop, doesn't feel. This plays over Gendry forging weapons, so we know what happens to Gendry, comes up to Winterfell and helps forge weapons. Jorah leads the Dothraki, and on his hip you can see Heartsbane, the sword of House Tarly. So Sam has given Jorah Heartsbane like many of us fought. Sam did save Jorah's life from Grayscale, and it looks like he's also given him his family sword. But I'm sure it's been revealed that Sam will wield a sword against at least one white. He has to wield his family sword at least once, even if he's given it to Jorah just to borrow. Because really, Jorah's a better warrior than Sam, it does make sense. Even Winterfell itself is getting prepared for the dead. It looks like there's spikes on the walls, maybe just made of wood to make it harder to climb, or maybe they're made of dragon glass to make the whites unable to climb. You know, you need to prepare the castle because whites can just climb walls. Grey Worm and Missandei kiss before the battle, and just as they kiss, you hear Jon's line, doesn't feel. That was a great cut, it just shows you what the living are fighting for. They're fighting for the people they love. Brienne's fighting whites with an orange background, maybe the castle's up in flames. Jamie looks pretty bloody in this shot, and he looks to be shouting at Brienne. Maybe she's charging forward and he's shouting at her to retreat, but she just won't come back. It looks like Pod's behind him. I think this is going to be a big moment in this scene. I don't know if it's when Brienne dies, but I think at least Jamie or Brienne will die in this battle. At least one of them will die. My money's on Jamie, but it's going to be hard to watch no matter what happens. Next up is the Iron Throne Room. There's a lot of debate about who these characters are, but I think it's definitely Euron Greyjoy and Harry Strickland. You know, Euron's arrived and presented the Golden Company, said, you know, I've kept my end of the bargain, what's in it for me? Obviously, Euron wants to become king, Cersei cannot trust him. The next shot is Cersei smirking, but she's also drinking wine, which kind of gets me a bit confused. She's meant to be pregnant, why is she drinking wine? Why would she do anything to harm the baby? Unless she's already miscarried, or the baby's already been born. We don't know what's going to happen to the baby, but eventually it's going to have to die, or something horrible is going to have to happen to it. But maybe it does survive, maybe Tyrion takes it, you know, to protect it. Honestly, whatever happens, Cersei's going to become the full-on Mad Queen. She's going to be incredibly dangerous. She'll probably end up blowing up King's Land in the wildfire. As always with Cersei, it looks like she thinks she's in control, but the situation's getting worse and worse for her. Remember, whoever wins up north will be coming for her next, unless she interferes and destroys both of them. Drogon and Rhaegal flying overhead. More Rhaegal, can't complain, he's my favourite dragon. I don't think the dragons have any riders, but like I said many, many times, Danny rides Drogon, Jon rides Rhaegal. 
This is very similar footage to the one we saw recently with Arya. She looks a bit winter town and it's her reaction to the dragons. You know, the small folk run in terror, but she seems amazed and smiles. Grey Worm is leading the Unsullied, definitely getting Helm's Deep vibes here. I actually think Grey Worm is going to die in this battle. You know, him and Missandei have said their goodbyes, they gave that kiss, but I think Grey Worm is going to have to go. Jon Snow in the God's Wood under the Weirwood Tree on his own. In the first episode, Ned Stark was sharpening ice. I think Jon is likely to sharpen Longclaw, you know, like a parallel there. He found out that his mentor, Jon Arryn, was dead. Maybe Jon Snow's found out some bad news. Maybe that's where he goes after he learns about his parentage. Maybe he goes there just to think. I'm sure Ned used to go under the tree quite a bit just to think. Maybe Jon goes there so he can be close to Ned. The next shot you see the hound in battle and it looks like fire is lighting up the scar side of his face. Yeah the hound definitely has to overcome his fear of fire. He's getting there but it still frightens him. I think he has to use fire to destroy his enemies. I think the hound is going to wield a flaming sword just like Beric Dondarrion. Jamie says I promise to fight for living. I intend to keep that promise. And that line's very similar to the line he said to Cersei in the season 7 finale. I pledge to ride north. I intend to honour that pledge. I think when Jamie first arrives, a lot of people are going to be suspicious, but I think Terry and Brienne, and most importantly Bran, are going to back him up. The Jamie and Bran reunion is going to be so important, their encounter started it all. Jamie pushed Bran out the window, and that led him down the path to becoming the Free-Eyed Raven. I think Jamie's going to ask for forgiveness, but Bran will tell him it had to happen, as that was his way of becoming the Free-Eyed Raven. He had to be pushed out that window. You could argue that Jamie has had the most character development throughout the entire series. There was a point where he kind of stumbled where they put him back with Cersei, but he's definitely on the right path now. The next shot is someone wielding a bow, but we don't actually know who it is. It looks like a northern outfit, maybe Stark. It could be Jon Snow, it could be anyone. And speaking of Jon Snow, he's running headfirst into danger. He does that better than anyone else. I'm definitely getting vibes of Aragorn charging at Helm's Deep after the wall has been broken. Maybe some massive disaster has happened, maybe someone's just died, and Jon Snow just charges in, putting his life on the line. The next shot is the Knights of the Vale running at a gate. Maybe something has went horribly wrong, but the next shot's a bit confusing. It could be horse legs, or even direwolf and wolf legs. It could be Nymeria's pack. I don't know if I want to get everyone's hopes up. I'm hoping Ghost and Nymeria lead the wolves against the dead. Danny and John walking towards Drogon and Rhaegal in their den, if you want to call it that. You know, there's lots of bones. A dragon's got to eat. And just look at the size difference between the dragons. We've finally got a good picture to compare them. You know, we've never had a great picture of them standing side by side. Drogon was always the biggest. He's always been the alpha. And whilst the others were locked up in the pyramids of Marine, he had free roam. I'm loving the Rhaegal spotlight. I want to see more of him. And like I said earlier, I think Jon Snow will eventually ride Rhaegal. Maybe this scene is where Jon bonds with Rhaegal. Remember, Rhaegal is named after Jon's father, Rhaegar Targaryen. They're the last two dragons and the last two Targaryens. It all makes sense. Sansa's looking pretty worried here, but it looks during the daytime, so it's probably not the ball, but it might be the morning after the ball. But I think she's watching everyone prepare, and she realises this could be it. Many people are going to die in this ball. I think most of the main characters are going to survive. You know, John and Danny are definitely going to survive, but a lot of the secondary characters are going to get killed off, and maybe one of the big ones as well. I think this battle's going to make grown men cry. So this is a very interesting shot here. Arya is wielding a stick, just like in Bravos. I don't know why a stick would be very useful against the dead. Obviously you can smash the whites, especially the ones that are more skeleton than human, but you really need dragon glass or fire to kill them. It's probably during the battle as you've got orange sky in the background. The dragons are probably lighting up the place. But obviously the dragons are going to be more focused on the other dragon, Viserion. You know, the dragons are incredibly powerful against the whites. But now the Night King has his own dragon. They need to focus on him. So there's more shots of characters looking depressed. Yeah, death is coming for them. No wonder they're depressed. And of course, Jon's parentage might be a big shock as well. You've got Daenerys and probably her in Jon's room. Maybe she goes there for a bit of peace and quiet. Tyrion finally gets a shot in the trailer, but I don't see any snow or orange fire in the background. So could this be somewhere else rather than Winterfell? Maybe later in the season when everyone goes down south. Because after episode 3, no matter the outcome, I think the survivors will flee south through the secret tunnels of Winterfell. Even though Tyrion's kind of took a back seat, you know, he doesn't get involved in the fighting anymore, I want to see him in action one more time. He might be Hand of the Queen, but he might need to fight as well. Drogon's breathing fire at someone. I don't know if this scene's going to be important. You know, it's just there because it looks cool. More shots of the living preparing to fight the dead. The Unsullied look to be ready, and if you look between them, you can see trebuchets. I think they could be an effective weapon against the dead. Just launch balls of fire at them. Brienne and Pod look to be leading the Knights of the Vale. Jorah is also waiting for the dead, and I'm definitely getting the vibes of, you know, Helm's Deep, watching the uruk waiting for them to arrive. And then the trailer ends of an undead horse, and that's all. Winterfell's in the distance, death is coming. 
Wow, what an amazing trailer. It teased so much but gave away so little. There's no need to spoil anything. Don't shove all your best scenes in trailers. I loved how it focused on the first three episodes and the storylines we knew about. You know, there's no need to tease anything from the finale or anything later down the line. I must say the production value looks incredible. It's like watching a movie. You know, we're talking a big movie. This is it guys, this is the end. It was an amazing trailer, but I want to hear what your favourite bit was. Personally, I love seeing John and Danny with the dragons. Honestly, the trailer was just perfect. Yeah, there's a lot of standing around waiting for battle, but that's what you need to do. There's no need to show anything massive, really. I'm actually hoping we don't get any more trailers or anything like that. I know you guys are going to be like, whoa, what are you on about? We want more. But listen to me, why do you want more trailers? We're just over a month to go now. Yeah, you can tease some more stuff, but I hope it's very minimal. You know, we don't need to see anything more. We're all waiting now. We're all going to watch it. I'm sure you guys have noticed I did make a video on Monday night talking about Entertainment Weekly's massive preview. I missed that video as I was working and then I came home and I was feeling pretty crap. I had a splitting headache so I went straight to bed. Entertainment Weekly are teasing more coming this week. You know, they usually have one week of just Game of Thrones news. It looks like we're going to get more. Obviously, I need to do this trailer video. That's the main focus. But I can talk about the stuff on Monday if you guys want me to. I don't know if I've got time to make a full-on video as I've got more videos to do. You know, HBO's going to release more stuff tomorrow and likely Thursday. But if you guys want to hear anything about Monday, you know, I can briefly talk about it. Just let me know. It seems like HBO know exactly when to release stuff. They released the first season 7 trailer when I was at work and they've done it again with season 8. So as always, I want to hear your thoughts on the trailer. What did you love? What was your favourite bit? Is there any Easter eggs you might have seen that I might have missed? Obviously, you can spend so long in trying to find every little detail, but it's just a trailer. They're cut in special ways. I like to call it trailer trickery. You know, not every scene matches up with the dialogue in the trailer. Bits are cut out, bits are changed around. But I'm so excited. Can't wait for the final season. Anyways, guys, remember to leave your thoughts in the comments below and then subscribe and like the video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.